Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. In today's video, I want to start things out with Intel's Battle Mage, specifically some updates to the specifications. Intel actually confirming some stuff officially, and I will touch on the release date as well. Then we're going to just briefly skim over some things with Celestial, and then we're going to finish the video off with NVIDIA's RTX 50, specifically Blackwell, as a couple of my sources have been telling me some interesting things that aren't enough for their own video, but I did just want to throw into the end of this one just to give you guys a couple of small updates and we're going to get into all of that plus more after this quick message from the sponsor of the video if you're running a copy of windows 10 which isn't activated of course not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options but there's also that annoying windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com and they have an excellent price on windows 10 professional as well as home keys yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So guys, basically, uh, Battle Mage will be the second generation of Intel GPUs, and after that, it will be Celestial, and then finally Druid. Intel themselves have confirmed a lot of details in terms of their targets and architecture, for Battle Mage, but have given precious few details officially anyway regarding the specifications and the performance of their discrete GPUs. Obviously, though, Battle Mage will run the gamut of various different market segments, including, well, discrete GPUs, as I just said, plus iGPUs and, well, professional usage stuff too. Uh, after um, Battle Mage, we will see Celestial and then uh, Druid. Those are the things that have been officially disclosed by Intel right now. Intel have also confirmed that Battle Mage, the hardware stuff, is essentially done, but uh, they are finishing off the software side of the equation, which is obviously just as important, perhaps more so, because ultimately speaking, you don't want things to crash or not, well, just not work correctly, especially if you drop money for it. And then um, the hardware team are essentially uh, working on um, um, Celestial as well as Druid. But We'll focus on those in just a moment. Now, a couple of months ago-ish, I did leak some of the specifications of these GPUs. Now, to my understanding, Intel will be sticking to GDDR6 memory for both G21 and G31, with G31 going up to 32XC cores, and G20 basically going up to 20XC cores, with a 256-bit and a 192-bit bus, respectively. Obviously, however, those can change in terms of you know different variants within you know those just as you've seen with like rtx 4080 and 4070 ti and stuff like that you know memory specifications can change based on the same um uh, actual chip. But now fast forward to today, there are a couple of interesting updates. Firstly, Intel themselves have made an interesting disclosure. So Intel obviously do need to support their board partners or their partners in general. And for that, we have Intel's Design IN Tool Store. And they have uh, listed, <laughs> this is a bit of a mouthful, PTT Engagement BGA 3283 BMG G31 VRTT Interposer prototypes. Oi, I felt like I needed a drink of water after saying all of that. Um, this was actually discovered, I believe, by M-I-K-T-T-D. I also want to give courtesy credit, by the way, to WCCF Tech, as they've done a pretty nice write-up regarding all of this, so I will leave a link to that article as well in the video description. Furthermore, uh, Bionic Squash on Twitter has also give confirmation that the G31 variants do go up to 32XC cores. Now, at this point, it's very early to talk about performance. I have in the past said that I've heard anywhere between RTX 4070 and 4080 levels. Unfortunately, what I can't get at the moment is confirmation what that is actually benchmarked against. Is it compute? Is it gaming? If it is gaming, what resolution? Is it a specific benchmark, for example, Firestrike? Is it an amalgamation of multiple benchmarks? Is it ray tracing? You know, what, what actually is it? Because otherwise it's very hard to know. And also, is that projection, in other words, a simulation, or is it actually on real hardware, which is completely different? 
because you can do like a simulation and everything's great, but in the hardware there's a bug that they didn't find. It's like, well, we kind of don't have time to do like, you know, fixes for this, so it's going to be like 20% slower than what actually we projected. On the other hand, it could end up that the silicon is clocking higher, let's say 10 or 20%, just let's be optimistic here and therefore obviously things differ and you can get higher levels of performance in other words it's very difficult to know right now so it really comes down to pricing anyway let's hypothetically say that it, it is like rtx 4070 levels or 4070 ti levels or whatever and it's also very cheap okay that's absolutely fine by me my friend um frankly you know graphics cards are getting expensive so i'm actually okay with a graphics card again let's just say 4070 ish levels of performance or 4070 you know whatever and it's you know that's at, at the end of the day if something's like capable of pushing like entry level 4k or high you know refresh rates levels of 1440p that is okay with me i uh not everyone wants to plonk down like 2,000 bucks basically for a graphics card as I'm sure everyone can appreciate because cards are becoming so expensive. It's going to be very interesting however to see how Battlemage does fare against not only um, RDNA 4 but also Blackwell. Now RDNA 4 I'm still hearing is going to be late this year or potentially early next year. Most sources at this stage are telling me early next year but Again, it seems like a case of the hardware is essentially done, so the delays do seem essentially down to the fact that AMD just wants to get rid of um, N32 and N31 inventory. In fact, the deal that I was talking about a while back with N32, where you get some game bundles, that does seem to have occurred. I don't know if it's all retailers and all regions. Um, it certainly has in a couple of regions because some people were sending me links about it. Again, it's going to be interesting to see what AMD actually ends up releasing with RDNA 4, I'll be very intrigued to see what the marketing strategy is for that because, you know, the rumor is that it's going to be roughly on par with a 7900 XTX or a 7900 XT, but ray tracing allegedly is significantly improved with RDNA 4. But anyway, let's continue with the Battle Mage stuff. So also, there are some device IDs for XC2, which obviously is Battle Mage. I want to give courtesy credit to forenix.com. Uh, these are from kernel.org and basically there are five different IDs that have appeared. I'm not going to read them out. You can see them on screen because I'll be here forever, but uh, 0XE202 is one example. Now, it's important to realize that some of these may simply be for other purposes, for example, prototype boards that don't release and so on and so on. But even so, there also seems to be some indication here of Celestial. Now, to my understanding, Celestial is still a go. So it is not canned. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens with Celestial. I'm hearing some really mixed information whether it is going to be a uh, chiplet-based design or not. At, the, at this point, I'm probably leading towards not, but that is not from a source. That is my guess. I really want to stress that, guys. I am pulling that on my ass. It could well not be because some people are telling me it is chiplet. Others are telling me it's monolithic. I'm personally at this stage leading towards monolithic. But we'll have to wait and see. I base that purely on the fact that uh, Battle Mage is pretty titchy in terms of the actual die. So Intel, theoretically, have quite a... They've got quite a scope to play with. Um, a rumour from one source, and I frankly don't put a lot of stock in this, but I'll just mention it here because I'm talking about Battle Mage and Celestial anyhow. But one person basically told me that Celestial is going to be roughly on par with the high-end NVIDIA cards, maybe a little bit slower. Um, that is, you know, relevant to that generation of products, just to be clear. But they're aiming for flagship performance for um, Druid. Again, I don't know if I believe that personally, but there you have it. And one final thing. So this is regarding Blackwell. So the rumor, of course, is with GB202... 
I'm trying to get all the um, I'm trying to get all the chip names uh, straight in my head here. So GB202, of course, is the Blackwell uh, chip, which is going to be powering the flagships such as the RTX 1590. Now, the rumor is, um, and I've been hearing this, Copper Type 7, and others have also posted much the same thing, that the chip itself can go up to a 512-bit GDDR7 bus. With that said, the rumor is that the 5090 is only going to be 448, with a decent number of SMs cut. Now, a source basically has told me quite recently that the reason you're hearing so many conflicting things with the 5090 is NVIDIA essentially have not decided the specifications and they're they're kind of they are leaning towards 448 purely because there's not enough competition from amd so obviously um rdna4 was originally going to be that chiplet based design and then followed up eventually with rdna5 but as you all know rdna4's chiplet designs have been cancelled and therefore we've only left with the you know kind of lower to mid-range variants which are going to be monolithic so with that said um, NVIDIA basically feels like they don't really need to release a variant of Blackwell which is super performant, therefore they can pretty much decide to do what they want in terms of tiering of performance. With that said, they can't cut the chip so much that it's not going to be at least somewhat appealing to users who have like a 3090 or a 4090 because obviously... I mean, I'm just example, but let's say that the 5090 was only like 20% faster than a 4090, who the hell is going to upgrade? Um, on the other hand, if they use the, you know, if they push the chips too much, it also makes things a little tricky for NVIDIA. And also they're using GB202, not just for the gaming variants, so... Anyway, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Uh, uh, once again, I apologize for being in a sleeveless shirt, but you probably see I'm sweating. It is really hot again, unfortunately, in the UK at the moment. And uh, unfortunately, I simply can't turn on things like air conditioning when I am filming, filming because otherwise you guys would just be hearing... Brrrr. So, you know, it was this or, well you know, die on camera, essentially. But um, anyway, guys, thanks very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.